Okay. Yep, I'll get started. Let me just familiarize myself. Okay, yeah. Okay, so in this workshop, I'll just briefly go over the rough introduction to LaTeX, the syntax, so like the commands and environments, uh, how to use LaTeX to write mathematics, and then uh, teach a bit about the bibliography feature, and finally some conclusion. So this will be like, uh, our, as I introduce each feature, I will talk to my VS Code setup. So if you guys have Overleaf, you can use Overleaf. In fact, it's a lot easier to use Overleaf, but I prefer to use VS Code because in my natural workflow, I'll be using, I'll be editing my LaTeX file in the same folder as my project for like research code or something. So yeah. Yeah, so this is the NUS hackers. This is part of Hacker Tools. And then uh, NUS hackers also organizes Hacker School, Friday Hacks and Hack and Roll. So it's a very cool CCA that you guys should all try to join. Yes. All right, so a bit about myself. I'm Jotam Wong, and my this is my GitHub. And basically, I'm a fourth year CS student, and I would like, like to be a professor. Yes. Uh, I enjoy playing video games, such as League of Legends, uh, Civilization, 5 and 6, and then 7 soon, and the Godot game engine as well. And I like walking and teaching. Yes. Yeah, so this is the required software. So before you attended this workshop, I trusted, I trust that you guys have installed a text distribution as well as VS Code, the LaTeX workshop. But you can also follow along with Overleaf. So Overleaf is basically Google Drive, but for LaTeX. So you can collaborate with multiple people on the same uh, document. So this is a brief introduction to what is LaTeX. So it's a markup language. So if you have used uh, hit, written some uh, websites before. It is basically similar to HTML. It's a markup language. And you, it's plain text in contrast to most. Uh, what you see is what you get, editors. So that's what this acronym stands for. So what you can, you can think of it as like uh, Microsoft Word, for example. That's an example. And it was started as a writing tool for mathematicians and computer scientists. It was built on top of tech by Leslie Lamport. So tech was the original system, and later is a set of macros that are built atop of tech. Oh yeah, so a fun fact is that later, uh, Leslie Report was the winner of the Turing Award in 2013 for distributed and concurrent systems. So if you ever uh, learn about distributed systems, you'll, you'll read about his name a lot. Like I think he came out with the vector clock, for, for instance. Oh yeah, and because it's plain text, it's versionable. You can use uh, VCS, so version control software like Git, to store your text files. So this was, uh, it was originally written by design and mostly written by Donna Nuth in 1978 because Nuth was disappointed with typesetting. So it, typesetting is basically converting like your text files to like beautiful documents essentially. And the goals of text is that it lets anyone produce high quality books with minimal effort. So if you have ever attended any lectures, you will notice that some of the slides, especially from uh, math departments, they tend to look exactly the same. And that's because they use uh, LaTeX, specifically Beamer, to produce their presentation slides. Yeah, and the point is that you would provide a system that gives exactly the same result on all computers at any point in time. And some random trivia is that the version number of text appro slowly approaches pi, as, as the version goes by. So it's it, it originally 3.0, then 3.1, 3.14. And I do not know why it's the next digit after this. Yeah. So the main use cases for LaTeX would be writing reports, scientific uh, computer science reports, uh, books, even cheat sheets. So if you have ever used uh, Jovin's uh, cheat sheets, her, her cheat sheets are all written in LaTeX. And you can also use it for presentation. So this set of slides right now that you're looking at was written using Beamer. And you can see the source code. If you just replace the PDF with a dot text. Yeah. So these are what I would say is the main use cases of LaTeX. Okay, does anyone have any questions so far? All right. So we get started with the basics of LaTeX. So this is the, the a LaTeX document consists of commands and environments. So if you're familiar with like function scoping, you can think of environments as like function scopes. It defines a set of values that all the, the code inside will, will follow. And the command syntax is as follows. 
So there are set, there's a, a list of commands that you can use and encapsulated within the square brackets are options. So there can be a variable number of options and this can be now as well. And then yeah, the arguments. So the difference between uh, options and arguments typically is that options will specify the formatting and arguments are, will be what is presented in the actual LaTeX document. And the environment syntax would typically start with begin and end. So this might be familiar to people who use uh, Python, like the begin keyword. So it defines a scope. Oh, sorry, the with keyword, yes. So begin environment. And comments in LaTeX are what comes after the ampersand. So to contrast this back to HTML, like text are commands and text with children are environment. So if you guys are more uh, familiar with HTML. So, so as I go through the, the commands uh, and, my, uh, as I, and I work through the examples, I'll, I'll explain what each command does. But if you are in overleaf right now, you can get started with like writing these simple four lines. All of you are on overleaf, right? Or your VS Code. Yes? Oh, or Tech Studio. Yes. That, that works as well. Yeah, so you can run the, depending on which text distribution you use, you can just run PDF LaTeX. And then you should be able to get your file, a PDF file. So you see some, a lot of output if you have the logs displayed. So let me get uh, to my VS Code. So I'll create a file called uh, So here I'll specify your font size and then I'll use the article document class. So typically you, there are some options are uh, article or uh, EX article. And report, but for the for most use cases, I think article will be fine. Now, if I you see that I on my VS Code in my comment form, I'll, I'll I'll build with a recipe, so I'll use PDF LaTeX. When in my file, go? yeah. So in, if you see Sam PDF now, hello world has been in Twitter on my document. So this is like the hello world later, essentially. Okay, so now the, the most important part about LaTeX compared to like uh, Microsoft Word, for example, is how you treat white space characters. So in LaTeX and Markdown, for example, when you put a space, right, you might expect to have a new paragraph, but that's not the case. So let, let, let's illustrate this. So all white space characters are treated as space. So. So there will be auto building as well, but I'll, I'll, I'll uh, explicitly note this down. So you see here that regardless of how many spaces I put, it, it just renders as a single, as a single uh, space. Okay, let me just close all this. Okay. So several consecutive spaces are treated as one space. Leading trailing spaces are ignored. A single line break is treated as a space. So, And two or more line breaks define the end of a paragraph. Yeah. So here I've got one line break and another line break. So if I were to do over here. Yeah, you guys see? Yeah. So there's one line break over here, which is a hidden slash a new line character here. So if you do another one over here, you will have a new paragraph. Okay. All right. Is everyone good so far? Uh, could I get some uh, uh, hands raised? Okay, nice. Very good. Okay, so we can start with some uh, spaces. So I was already going through some, but let me just copy this. Yeah, so oh, I don't think I copied the formatting. Yeah, okay, yeah, I need to do Control Shift V. Let me just see. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Yeah. 
So now we go to reserve characters. So later it's like, you can think of it as like a programming language of sorts. So there are also the, the reserve keywords and their reserve characters. So if you wanted to write the hashtag symbol in your document, you can't just do it. For example here. You'll get, you'll get a recipe error and the compiler will throw a warning. So if you wanted to include the symbol, you use this and then build it. Okay, there's something wrong. Oh, oh, because I still have it here. Okay. And now you see the hash symbol here. So this, uh, this character has special meaning. So for example, this carrot over here, if you use it in a math mode, will waste, basically you can think of it as like a sub, uh, the subscript and the postscript and the superscript, sorry. So as I already mentioned, the M% percent is used for writing comments. Yeah, and so we can see here about the diacritics. So diacritics are what you would call as accented, uh, accented keywords. So if we go to my other LaTeX file. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Yeah, and we observe here. So we open up. So we can observe the difference in output. So if I put the slash J, if I use this over here, I'm basically making an accented J. Does this make sense? Yeah. Yeah, and if you wanted to use a, if you want to have a slash in your, in your file, you will use slash text backslash because as previously mentioned, if you do a double slash here, this is forcing a line break. So immediately after the line break, you get a new a new line of uga buga, okay? Yeah. So another thing that you might uh two characters that you might commonly use are the less than and greater than uh, symbols, and over here if you were to try using them, like as follows, and then you do it. Yeah, you see that it doesn't get rendered properly. So instead, what you will use is the less than, less equals symbols, for example, or less than. But this one, you will need to write in math mode. Yeah. So if you want to, so if you want the mathematical symbol, I'll, I'll talk about math mode later, but if you want the mathematical symbol, you will use the slash less than, slash less equal. But if you want in text form, which you use text less, As follows, but you see that here there's a ugly, there's an ugly, uh, there's an ugly space here. I, I'll, I'll talk about how we can fix that later. Okay. And usually square brackets are reserved for options, as I previously mentioned in the syntax for commands. So slash command uh, text will fail, and you will need to uh, wrap it up the angle brackets here. Uh, are there any questions here? Okay, yeah. So what makes LaTeX powerful is that people can write uh, packages for use for you to use. So typically you would like use the, the graphics package to put uh, pictures into your LaTeX file. And its package manager is called C10 and the documentation looks like a 1990s website. Yeah, so you would use the command use package and then package name here to import and use a package. So over here, you see, I've, I've imported a few packages. Okay. So now we are done with the basic syntax. And then we'll get to the more interesting part, which is commands and environments. So back to our example of document class article. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the document class. So the document class basically defines a formatting standard and it also provides you some additional options. For example, if you wanted to use Beamer, if you wanted to make a, a presentation slide with LaTeX, you would use a document class of Beamer instead. And then there'll be a, a whole host of other options for defining uh, what is a, how you want to format your slides. For example, how I get these options over here and your team as well. 
And if you wanted to write a paper for ACM, which is the Association for Computing Machinery, you will use ACMAT. So I guess articles in the most generic format, as I previously mentioned. And if you wanted to write your own cheat sheets, because there's usually a two-page uh, limit for most cheat sheets at NUS, you would want to use the EXT article because this offers you extra font sizes. So what you can do is play around with like this uh, and, and observe how the document changes. So if I go back to sam.txt and I change this to report. Yeah, so you won't, you won't see much new changes here and, until we write a more fleshed out uh, a file. Let me just change this to article. So the default font size is 10 or 10, but you can change it up to some limits. And you can specify the size of your paper as well. So A4 paper, letter paper, and landscape, as well as whether you want a landscape layout. And then you have uh, other options for title page and not title page. So you can find out more information over here. But because these are options, right? So that's where you would specify it over here. So these are where you would specify the, the options that you wanted. Okay, now document environment. So environments are like the more important concept in LaTeX that I would say, because you basically, uh, if you want like everything to be left aligned, for example, or centered, you will define a centered environment and then all your content inside would be centered. So when we write slash begin, we are defining our document environment. So everything inside is what's uh, printed as a PDF file, if that's your chosen output. And anything after when uh, we basically gets ignored. And anything before the line slash begin document is what is called the preamble. And typically you would uh, write, define all your macros, or define all your macros and import your packages with their options here. So top matter, information about the document itself. So you can, if you want to style your document better, you would have a, Title option. So in this case, title is how to basic. So slash this uh, LaTeX command basically help print a fancy LaTeX text, then define the author. So let me just quickly speed run this. So if you don't have the begin type, the make title, if I go to sam.pdf, now nothing is shown. So you see here that there's a command slash make title. So inside your document, and then if I build it, yeah, now you have a title. So depending on your document class, you can uh, uh, specify an abstract as well. Like document class will affect your formatting options. And now we get to sections. So in your most uh, documents, for example, you might have a header one, header two, header three. These are basically like your sections and subsections and sub subsections. So in LaTeX, you don't have sub sub subsections, which is you don't have a H4, if you guys are more familiar with that term. So, and when you write a slash section, sub slash subsection, LaTeX will automatically number it. So here's what I mean. So over here, let me call this like the introduction. So this is what's passed into as an argument to slash section is what you name your section. So you see an introduction here. And you notice here that it's numbered. So, and it, it a nest as well. So if I define a slash subsection, say, Yeah, so this is how it will show like, and you see that we get the automatic numbering. So if we don't want to have it be numbered, what you do is you an asterisk. Like that, for example, and if I build it. Yeah, so you notice now that uh, the rest of the, the headings are still nested. So you have to, the automatic number as well, and the begin is zero. 
And one cool feature is that basically you can have the table of contents. So if I go to my other document, you see here how I have a very nice uh, table of contents that is automatically uh, adjusted every time you create a new numbered sentence. And you, you place it right at the start here. Yeah, and uh, as I mentioned before, unnumbered sections will not be included in the table of content unless you explicitly add it. Oh yeah, do I have any, is there any questions over here so far? Okay. Oh yeah, there's no need to take a picture because the slides are available here. Okay, so now about uh, formatting your fonts. So uh, in Microsoft Word, typically you would write Control I to start writing italics or Control B to start writing bold. But in LaTeX, you will use it with an uh, environment command. So over here, we see that there's a slash EMPH and it basically means emphasize and it itali italicize, italicizes the text, yes. <laughs> And the command is dynamic. So if you have two slash m's, the, the, the word goes back to normal. So let's see this in action. Oops, where did it go? All the sample dot text. Okay. Yeah, so it tells us. So, okay, let me go back to my original small document. Okay. Yeah, so other options that exist are, so if you want to write, uh, so all of you guys here are programmers, so you know what are monospace fonts. So you can use text TTT, and BF is basically uh, to bold your text. So let, let's demonstrate all of this. And sometimes you might want to uh, define an environment and still write normal text. So in that case, you would use slash text normal. So let me yeah, start. Yeah. So it looks pretty nice. Okay, let me demonstrate the small capitals. Okay. And the uppercase, in, in case you're lazy and you don't want to make it, uh, you don't want to press sh uh, shift on your keyboard or something, I don't know, <laughs> yeah. And then you can change the font size dynamically as well. So earlier we defined a document level font size, but you can also have sections where you would want to have a small text. So I've prepared uh, in my sample.pdf here. We can see that within the same scope, we can change the font size. So let's take a look at sample.text. Yeah. So this is slash tiny which is the me is tiny. So this, this is very tiny compared to the normal font. Then you've got script size. So slash script size is basically uh, like the size of your quote snippets. Then slash small. So this is basically an ascending order. Yeah. Oh yeah, for some reason, the slash huge doesn't have all capitals as well. So I'm not sure what's up with that. Okay, do I have any questions up to here? All right, very good. So now uh, text and paragraph formatting. So you will use a tilde to tell LaTeX not to change a space into line breaks. So typically when you have a, a space, a space, a, a new line character, it's a line break, but you can basically use tilde to change it. But the more important part, I think, is the line spacing, which is used to the set the spat space package. I think that that will be that's more preferred. So over here, I've already imported it. 
So you will write slash use package set space at the top of your document. And then let's go to the line spacing section. Oh yeah, okay. I wanted to show this in a demonstration sample. So I guess one aspect of using that or the tutor would be in math mode. So if I go to samples. Because in math mode, uh, you can't, uh, you would have to, if you wanted to do an equivalent, right, you will do this for x. But then the problem with that is that your x is now, uh, the point there is your x is now a normal, uh, a text x instead of the algebraic x. So, I mean, another way you could do it is just define a hard for the uh, space here. But yeah. But I think like the, this option is cleaner. Yeah. So you now get the same result for both. Oh yeah, I'll talk about math mode extensively later. I think that's the more cool part. Yeah. So cause so far, right, right, right now here is like, it seems more tedious than Microsoft Word perhaps, but when you start writing mathematics, like I think later is much more advantageous. Oh yeah, but here I was going to demonstrate the line spacing. So the set space package has a few commands for spaces. And earlier I was talking about environment. So this is the first example of an envi environment. So over here, the argument that I pass is 2.5. So it's basically saying that the uh, a space should be 2.5. So if you go to sample.pdf, see that this part got this huge gas meter line. So what, what I've done here is this is a line break, correct? So if I do... If I go back to the first part over here. Let me insert a random line here. Yeah. So let's take a look at this one and this one. Oops. Hmm. Oh yeah, hopefully the single spacing, right? Yeah. So this single spacing of causes a line. And if you take a look at the other one, or one half space, there's no there's no space between this wall here, which is kind of weird. I'm not sure what's up with this. Hmm. Yeah, but I think the most important point would be using environments. Because typically, you would want to uh, define an environment where your changes would apply to everything inside. So environment is like the more preferred way instead of like having a manually placed commands everywhere, if that makes sense. Okay. Oh, and, and quotations. So in, uh, in LaTeX, you'd want to quote like that. So it might take a while to get used to compared to Microsoft Word. So let's take a look at how this looks. So let's take a look at what, what could go wrong. Yeah, so you see here that my linter is telling me, uh, please use this uh, symbol and not the other one. You see here that this one is like not very nice. Yeah. So you would do with the double. Okay. Everyone got that? Okay, so the next one is about uh alignment. So sometimes you want to justify your text left, right, or center. And you can use these commands. So slash ragged right, slash ragged left, as well as slash centering. So I my in my current document, I have uh, have these environments slash begin uh, flush left. So we see here that your text is justified to your left. So originally, the very first paragraph would, some, would look like that.
Yeah, so we can you can see the effects that your left justification has done. And it is right justified. And it is center. So I think uh, out of these three, the one that I use the most often is center. Because sometimes you want to center your picture. If you don't have this uh, the center environment, your picture will like be uh, aligned to the left and it might not look as nice. Yeah. So these are the three basic commands for paragraph alignment. Okay. Yeah, so earlier I already hinted about paragraph indentation. So by default, the first paragraph after a new heading is not indented. Also note that uh, my, 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 my spacing here actually doesn't matter, as, as I already mentioned. But you would like follow some level of nest, nested, nested spaces and tabs for people who are modifying your latex code. Oops, okay. There's an error here. Yeah, so this new paragraph, if I write, if I now write another new paragraph, right? So this. I have no idea what. I have no idea what this issue is. Yeah, so this is another paragraph that has now been indented. So uh, this uh, indentation style follows the typical Anglo-American publishing convention. And if you're writing on overlay for the first time, it will probably annoy you a bit. Yeah, so you can actually change the, the length and you can also use the slash indent first package to indent the beginning of every section. And you can force indent a non-indented paragraph. So let's take a look at this. So oh, oh, I think the reason why I already indented. Okay. So let me build this one. And now we can we can see how this has affected the the indentation of our paragraphs over here. Yeah. So if I unimport uh comment out this line again and I build it and I go back, I've never I have no idea why this happens. Yeah. Yeah, so now we are back to the standard paragraph behavior. So right now, this uh, you can also set the length of the indentation. So in the preamble, so this is before slash begin document. length so let's try 5 cm for example i wouldn't recommend adjusting this i think the defaults are pretty sensible already yeah let me just more It takes a while. Right. Okay. Uh, are there any questions on this slide? Okay. Oh yeah, so if you want to make a paragraph uh, boundaries clear with zero indentation, you would use a, uh, you will need some vertical space between paragraphs package, which I already mentioned. Okay, and now sometimes you might want to write a uh, text that, uh, maybe I'm not sure why it would, will not be, will, that will be interpreted by the compiler in a monospace font. So verbal theme. So the verbal theme environment reproduces every character you input. So this environment here will ignore the line space 
examples to an example. So here I've got a section called slash verbal dim, where I've copied the text in the slide and pasted it here. And we can take a look at how the output looks. So a few things. Firstly, you notice that the font is different. And secondly, you notice that uh, now the spaces that I had, they actually, they actually, here, yeah, there's a lot of space here. So if I were to get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. So there, there is still the usual uh, padding that LaTeX would, uh, put on the left side, I mean the left margins. Like pseudocode. But for pseudocode, if you want syntax highlighting, there's another package that we can use later called Minted. And I'll introduce that in uh, greater detail later. Or in the very next slide, actually. Yeah. So this is the Minted package that you can find over here for the documentation. And you will use the Minted package quite extensively actually, if you are writing like reports and you want to include code snippets. So here I've got a section where I have some Python code and some Java code. So you, you notice already that in my editor, there is syntax highlighting. But if you were to do this uh, in verbal team, let, let's take a look. Oh yeah, also take note that when you have a begin environment, you need to have a closing environment as well. Otherwise, they'll get a compile error. Now, so we can take a look at how this So if you're right, if your purpose of your report is to show a code, obviously you would want uh, automated syntax highlighting because the default is to manually like color the text yourself. And I don't think that's very ideal. So the minted package does this for you. So here we have the factorial function in Python with no syntax highlighting. And the same, the same text uh, in the uh, minted environment Python, Java, I think a lot of languages are supported. Like most of the languages that you would use in a school project, for instance, would definitely be supported. So for example, Python and Java. So these are two identical factorial functions. I mean, behavior wise. And that there's automated syntax highlighting. So I think it's very cool. Yeah, so another thing that you might, the next thing you want to do in LaTeX is how you would typeset a URL. So for that, you can use a package called the hyperref package. So you input your URL here, <clears throat> and then what here is an actual URL. I'll click on it. I'll go to nshackers.org. And if you want a colored hyperlink, instead of the box, instead of the option, so actually one thing that I didn't put in my slide, but I would want to go through is how you can have uh, internal links inside your PDF file. So for example, in uh, LaTeX, like some in your reading a math lecture note, for example, it might reference like a slash theorem or something, right? And if you click on it, you can jump to it, right? So that's something that you can do here. So, so one way is by using a label. Label here. Right. Yeah, so over here I've created a label high and a ref high. So what, what this does is oh, my keyboard stopped working. Oops. Uh hello. Okay. Is it back? Right. So if I go to my sample. Oh. This was in math fun. 
Okay, so, so you see here there's a question mark, question mark, because I haven't uh, enabled the link properly. So I think I need to import the package hyper. Yeah, so now you see here that previously, before I imported the hyperref package, when I clicked on something in the, t the, the tables of contents, it wouldn't jump. But now if I click on spaces, it would jump. And the same thing here would apply with the high that I just placed. So where is the high that I just placed? Okay, that thing is not here. But yeah, so that's what the hyperref package does. So another thing, if I wanted to have a URL to the NUS hacker, so if we go back here. So I think it's a paragraph skip. Oops. Oh yeah, yeah. First here I need to put the And now this should work. Yeah, so now if I click on it, it will open me a link to the end of the And if the you notice how in the text it's a doc uh, a rectangle, so here. And if I build it now, yeah, you see that it looks a lot nicer. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, uh, one thing that I forgot to mention was how to put pictures. So. Now, so you import the graphics package, and now you can insert pictures. So I, I forgot to put that in my slides. Yeah. So here I've got pictures in the rest folder. So put rest here. So this is like a hyperlink to here. So let's say feedback.jpg. And now if I go back to my document, You see this uh, figure over here. So this is also uh, the QR code to the full package. And if I it, I find the figure is too big, right? What what I commonly like to do is put the width. So this text width command here is a macro that will expand into like the text width. So here I put width like say zero point five. And if I build it now, it, the, the figure is smaller. So I think this is one of the most important things. And then followed by a center command here, for example. Yeah, so now here is centered. Yeah. So the usual rules from the alignment apply here. You could justify left, right, so, yeah. And then we can also uh, start with figures. So if I do a figure, As follow. Hey, I think that's about what I wanted to talk about for hyperlinks. Okay, all right. So now is the next section, and I think it is the most important section when you are learning LaTeX. Because I would, I believe that the biggest advantage that LaTeX has over Microsoft Word is writing a very mathematics heavy documents. So this is the most important part. Yes. So, Nu's motivation to develop text, amongst others, 
was to allow simple construction of mathematical formulae that looks professional when printed. And it is also one of LaTeX's greatest strengths, which is typesetting mathematics. And uh, the package that you would import that will provide a lot of powerful commands over just plain LaTeX is a package called Math Tools. But some uh, packages that you might want to import as well uh, would be AMS fonts. So we will encounter that later when we are trying to print the characters like the real numbers, for example, and AMS math. So you have a few modes for displaying uh, math equations. So firstly, you have got uh, inline. So the formulae are on a line by themselves. And this is just shorthand notation for the display equation environment. So if some of you have uh, used LaTeX before, you might also be familiar with the dollar dollar uh, sign. But this is an older uh, text syntax. And the preferable way is uh, this shorthand notation here. And similarly, you can also get automatically numbered equations if you use an uh, equation environment. So let's get started with my math fun here. So here's my shorthand equation. So this is basically the equation. This equation renders out as Yeah. So this equation renders out as a uh, e to the power of i pi plus one equals to pi. And if we did the equation environment, you will get a number environment, which you can reference if you use the hyperref package as well. Yeah. yeah, so if you want to use an in, so notice how uh, this equation that we use is on a brand new line. But if I wanted this equation to be on this same line, I would use Yeah, so now, if I wanted it to be on the exact same line, I would use a dollar sign. I would enclose my equation in a dollar sign. Okay? So the options are uh, either enclosing your equation in a dollar sign or the slash uh, square bracket, uh, close bracket, or an explicit environment command, which will number your equations for you. And uh, this also works on Markdown. So if you guys have used Markdown, like typically for writing your notes or something, this 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 would also work. Yeah, and there's also the, the latex shorthand of slash. So previously it was a square bracket and now it's a circle bracket. Yeah, so there was there is a huge, huge list of math symbols, and I don't think anyone remembers the most except them except the most commonly used ones. So typically you you would like look at this link. Or Google, like, oh, what's the symbol for all the real numbers? And you get that. Yeah. Okay, so now, now we want, want to uh, have, uh, like, if you want to write, like, 5 to the power of uh, 2, you will use the caret and then your underscore to write a subscript notation. So, for example, here, k, n plus 1. So, if more than one expression is raised or lowered, you'll want to group them using curly brackets. Yeah, so like this is a short exercise if you guys could try to typeset this. So we can work this through this together. So let me go to my sam.txt file. So here I'll begin a new uh, equation. Okay, so because these n plus 1 are both in the subscript form, you will need to use the bracket to group them together. So you can begin like that. And if we go to sam.pdf, 
you will see that now I've created a brand new equation. It's numbered equation and you've got Kn plus one. And you use the caret to raise this to, the, to write the superscript n squared. And if you want to have both, if you want to have both superscript and subscript, you can just combine it as follows. So here would be, so here is just n, and then oh, this is square. So you don't need this bracket actually if it's just a single term. So if what 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 this will look like is just like that, but. I, I would usually uh, wrap it up in brackets just to be more clear. Yeah. So this, this is the same thing. And finally, minus K. Yeah. So this is how we might typeset this particular example. Were all of you able to get this? You guys uh, tried to write the the equation. Yeah. yeah. So some fractions. Yeah, I, I like how LaTeX handles the fractions. So you can have very nested fractions. As, so basically this first uh, argument corresponds to the numerator. And the second one is the denominator. So this will result in this. And if you wanted to nest it, it would be quite nice. So let's take a look. So this one will get uh, x squared, and then this is y cubed. But if you wanted to nest it further, so this is like x squared, and then y pi or something. Yeah, so this is how it would look like. And you can nest it as much as you want. Yeah, Yeah. so I, 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 I really like how this is done, but apparently, like you might, some people don't, Enjoy this, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And this uh symbol is basically n choose r, but you could also there's a for almost I think there is no math symbol without its corresponding LaTeX uh, command basically. So this will be binary. I'm missing a com a package, I think. Um, oh, I think I need the yeah the math tools package. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, typically when your error is like undefined control sequence, it's because you don't have the correct package. So like they take to recognize that command. Oh, so I need to build it again. Hmm. Oh yeah, okay, it's it's over here, right? Okay, yeah. I forgot to I forgot that yeah, in uh, in the equation mode, like you don't have the it's all rendered on a single line. And square roots. So let me just paste this command. Yep. So clearly, you could uh, combine the 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 arguments in arbitrarily complex manners to build any equation that you want basically. So I, it is it is quite, once you get used to how the commands in LaTeX are done, it is very straightforward to build very complex equations compared to like Microsoft Word. Because with Microsoft Word, like it would literally show you the fraction and then a, a small square inside and then you click inside and yeah. If you guys have ever tried to write math in Microsoft Word, yeah. Okay. 
And if you're typesetting a report for like calculus or something, you would encounter the summation and the integral symbols. And so LaTeX obviously would have that as well. So like you have the slash sum and slash in for sum and integral. And then you would specify the limits using a caret and the underscore. So it's the same thing. So this uh, first line of code corresponds to this. So this is basically summing a ti subscript i from 1 to 10. And over here, if you don't want uh, the top and bottom to be at the side, what you can do is you can use this slash limits argument. So if I put it right after, you'll notice that they are displayed at the top and bottom. Or you can use displayed equation mode if you want. So this, this is just uh, up to you personal preference. And you can note, note the use of this uh, backslash comma. So if you take a look over here, there is a small space. Yep. So let's take a look at how this might look like. Yep, okay, let me just do it. Make this all the way. Okay. Uh, is there any questions on here so far? So these are what we call uh big operators, and they are the equivalents with like the multiplication symbol, which we call slash plot. The union symbol, which is called big cup, and the intersection symbol, which is called big cap. Yeah, so the names are quite weird because you would expect it to be like slash intersect. Yeah, but so you can define a macro. So if you're more comfortable with a particular convention, you can define a LaTeX macro to have a particular term refer to the big cap symbol, for instance. But yeah, it does look like a big cap, basically. And this is clearly a cup. Yeah. Yeah, so we, we refer to this as big commands because in math, like you call it like the big operators. Okay, and these are uh, brackets, braces, delimiters. Yeah, so here's a very nice code snippet. So each, each alphabet corresponds to the bracket. So the first thing to note here is that we are in math mode because I've got the dollar sign. So this is uh, inline math mode. So this is the parentheses that you're comfortable with, square brackets. And because uh, this bracket is commonly used for arguments, you need to uh, preface it with the backslash. So this is how you get, I think it's called curly brackets, yeah, curly brackets, sorry. Not angle brackets, yeah. This is angle brackets, yeah. So slash L angle for the left side of the angle, the left side of the angle brackets, and then R slash angle. So as usual, you can like nest them together to form very uh, complex math equations. So let me just, Copy this. Okay, I think this will not turn out very well if I copy it. So let me just write it. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about the L angle. Yeah, so over here, I can have anything I want. So obviously, if I write uh, another D, right, LaTeX won't be able to tell that what I mean is left angle into D. So you need to put a space over here. And then this will look right. And then the D will be treated as an algebraic D because you're in math mode over here. And if I wanted it to be in text, I would use the text command. I follow. Yeah, but if you are in text mode, then the, the space doesn't look very nice. Yeah. So if I wanted to like write a tuple XY, for instance, this is how it might look like. So the G, the L floor, so the left side of the floor, the floor bracket, yeah, and the ceiling. So the floor and ceiling operations in math for like integers. And then UL corner and your UR corner. Yeah. yeah, do I have any questions on this slide? Matrices? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can define matrices uh, out of scope for here. And I don't remember the commands off my head, but we can Google. Yeah, I don't remember the commands for matrices off my head. The AMS math. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so I don't remember the commands off my head. Yeah. Oh yeah, but if you're using overleaf, the this overleaf has a very good documentation for everything. So here you notice that here is the AMS math package. Yeah, matrices and tables, or you can also define tables in LaTeX the same way. Yeah. Like you, you define the number of columns and then you uh, use the M percent to delimit each cell entry. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you. Well, are there any other questions? Okay. And automatic sizing. Okay. So here you've got two equations, and you notice that they are sized differently. So basically, a uh, LaTeX will automatically size according to your largest, uh, largest or uh, character, basically. Yeah, so if you notice here, what, what is different here from these two equations is that in this slide here, we are using a larger left bracket. And over here, we have got a smaller left bracket. Yeah, it's basically with this slash left here. Okay, I think this slide's pretty simple. Okay, now this is like the fun part, which is like, given what we have learned over here, we can try and uh, typeset these four equations. Yeah, so this is relatively not non-trivial. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys are on overleaf right now, you guys can try and typeset these four equations. So earlier I went through the binomial command. So there was slash binom, which is how you would get this com this one. And this one might be a bit more challenging. So you, how, how would you get the N before the C, given what we have learned so far? And then this one would be the, the slash fraction command. Uh, so just a quick uh, raise of hands. Who here is attempting to typeset this? Yeah, so I will go through the solutions one by one. So let's go over the first one. Yeah. So I previously already mentioned that you can use the R, the slash binom command. So this is this is the, the first one, slash binom nr. And then to have the empty character, you just define, you just use uh, curly brackets with no arguments, and then you subscript, you, uh, you use the underscore to add an N over here. So this looks like a hack, but I think it is the most common way one would do the NCR, the N type set NCR, and choose R. And then the fractions, it's quite simple. So you do the slash frac, N factorial, and R slash factorial. Yeah. Yeah. So if you look at sample.pdf, we have typeset the first equation. And the second equation, okay, here I do the spacing. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure why I had this. So the second equation is the limits to infinity. Oh, yeah, I lost that. Yeah. yeah, so to get the infinity symbol, you would use a INFTY. So if you use a INF, okay. It will be I, the, the text, but clearly we want the symbol. Oops. 
What's wrong? Yeah. Also note here that I've used the slash limits to push the end to infinity downwards, as I covered just now, else it will end up at the side. And the, using the command slash lim for the limit. And then this here is the pipe, the pipe bracket. And this is the row symbol, which is this uh, r slash h row. Oh, I just realized that I should have used the, yeah, this, this comma yeah. to, yeah. And the third option is, the third equation is the a derivative. So here I use slash frac. So notice here that the D, Y are all algebraic uh, letters instead of the your normal uh, uh, text. So that's why you don't define a slash text environment and then you, Superscript the, the D as follows. So here you get D squared Y and then DX squared for the, the denominator and then PX slash frac DY over DX. Yeah. And the final one, so the final one here is where you would need to import the AMS fonts package. So because this R symbol is the real real numbers. Yeah, so that's how you would typeset these few equations here. Now, is there any questions on this slide? Yeah. Uh, uh, so your question is if you wanted a different mathematical symbol like a different Greek letter yeah so all the Greek letters are supported so there is a corresponding uh, latex command for it yeah that, does that answer your question Yeah, so are there any other questions for this slide? Yeah, so you guys can, uh, as you typeset more math equations, like it, the, it will, like you'll get the hang of it and you'll be able to write much more complex math equations. So like for practice, you will always start simple. And I guess it will be, it, it is good practice to typeset like all your math homeworks, for example. It, like once you write out the, the, the workings on hand and you derive the answer, then you can try and typeset your proofs or your workings on LaTeX. And then soon you'll be able to write like very beautiful reports. Okay. So the last thing that I want to cover is bibliography. So if you're writing a report or a research paper, you will need to do citations and you need to cite like a particular paper and so on. So another of uh, LaTeX uh, features is an automated bibliography and references which is especially useful when you're writing a formal paper. And in particular, we'll be using BitTech. So there are a lot of other options, but the one that I've used is BitTech. So I'll be just covering it. Yeah. So you have all your citations in a .bit file. And this is what a sample .bit file might look like. So this .bit file serves as your project's bibliography database. So if I go to my file explorer, yeah, I've got my file ref.bit, okay? So this is a label, textbook. So if I wanted to cite this textbook, I would uh, use the command slash cite and then the label that I've inserted to cite it. So after I've created this .bit file, I need my LaTeX file to know about this file's existence. So I'll, you'll need to include these two commands, bibliography style, and this 
could be any uh, option. So there, there's a list of options that you can use. For example, I think one, you guys might have learned about the citation style, ACM citation style, I think, yeah. And this slash bibliography is the name of the file. So because I called mine refs, ref.bit, I would, uh, this one would be ref, not without the s. So once you've included these two commands, anytime you want to cite the textbook, you will put a slash site afterwards. So if I go to sample.text, so over here, I the sentence slash latex is a set of macros built upon tag and inside the textbook. So if I go to sample.pdf, this is how it would look like. So let me demonstrate how I might uh, add another. So on Google Scholar, let's say I want to uh, cite a paper called Flink. So Google Scholar has a button cite. So you're not interested in all, any of this, go to BitTech, copy this, paste inside your slash bit file. So here they call it a Carbon 2015 Apache, but you can name it anything you want because this label is uh, defined by yourself. And so I want to highlight two, one thing first. So if I have this entry in my bit file now, and then I build this again, so over here in my VS Code recipe, if I want to build a project that has a bit file, I will need to actually run this a PDF LaTeX first, and then bit tag, and then PDF LaTeX twice. So if you just run PDF LaTeX, what would happen is that your produced document will have question mark, question mark, question mark. And that's because if you just run PDF LaTeX, uh, LaTeX doesn't recognize what the slash site and what all these references are. So after you have generated the initial file, then you run bit tag and you'll generate the references. So this is like slightly technical, but basically Overleaf has a very great uh, article explaining why you run this weird command for like four times. Yeah. So now if I go to my sample.pdf, even though we have now added another entry to our bit file, you will see that in references, I still only have the Donald Nuth textbook that we cited. And this is because a LaTeX will automatically uh, tag check which citation was actually used. Okay? So if I wanted to like... So here if, in VS Code, and I'm sure in Tech Studio as well, you have a list of all the labels that you can choose to cite. So if I want to cite this, and I'll build my file again. Yeah, so now you see that it has automatically added the site, the, the paper along with the proper citation, and now here as well. Yeah, so every time you're reading a research paper, this is, this is what goes on, basically. Like, all the list of citations, and then you click the number, and you, you automatically jump here, all right? Okay. Yeah, so that's all. Uh, that, do I, is, does anyone have any questions for the bibliography section? Okay. Okay, so we are at the end, so the conclusion. So if you want to learn more about LaTeX, the best source is Wikibooks, which is very good, as well as Overleaf, as I've already mentioned. So this is like the most comprehensive sources of how you would learn information. And of course, there's always Stack Overflow for like, sometimes you're writing like a nested minted a code block and then something goes wrong and you don't know why. And someone on Stack Overflow has the solution. Yep. And in university in NUS, if you, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that with your NUS email, you can get Overleaf Premium for free. So I would highly, highly recommend signing up for Overleaf with your NUS email. And then you, you and uh, your group mates can collaborate on LaTeX documents together. And LaTeX, similar to other uh, learning languages, you want to learn from uh, good code bases. So there are plenty of good uh, LaTeX code repositories on GitHub, but and the one thing that you would you could do after learning LaTeX is making your own cheat sheets and making them open source. And I think there's a very good source of cheat sheets from Jovin. 
Yeah, and uh, all her cheat sheets and her source code that were used for producing the LaTeX cheat sheets are over here. And finally, acknowledgements. So this set of slides were modified off Julius Putra, who was an ex-NUS Hackers core team member, as well as his Beamer template. And you can find his GitHub information over here. And finally, uh, please scan the QR code for the feedback form. And you can find the NUS Hackers Telegram group chat here and the Telegram channel here. Yeah, thank you.